one of the photos that we took in class this week. I'm going to start by opening it in Photoshop. Then size this photo as you would for your blog. And as we know, the magic number for your blog is 630 pixels wide. Oops, I have some old files opening in here too. There we go. For the purpose of today, let's just work with this one. I'm viewing it at 33%. I always like to zoom in or zoom out to a round number. because Sometimes when you're viewing it um, at one of the halfway point numbers, it comes up a little bit pixelated. So I'm actually going to zoom out just a little bit. And Before I crop anything, I'm going to go through some of my photo processing techniques. So the first thing I like to do when I'm shooting a portfolio shop is I need to straighten this photo out so that I know what space I'm working with. It's shot a little bit crooked, which is just fine. It's easy to fix. So let me show you a little trick here. When I ho hover over this um, eyedropper tool and click and hold down with my mouse, I get more options. And I'm going to select the ruler tool. Now with this ruler tool, I'm going to draw either the horizontal line or the vertical line the line that I want to be the vertical or the horizontal. So uh, let's see. On his, I'm going to draw this vertical line by clicking right here and dragging down along his vertical line. So you can see that the line I'm drawing is crooked, but I want it to be straight. So once I've drawn that, I go right up to image, image rotation arbitrary, and it's using the angle of my line right here, it's already automatically plugged in there. And so I'm going to click OK. And there's no guesswork, it just straightens it right out for me. A nice little subtle change. And then you can go in and, and do it again if it looks not quite straight to you. I'm going to run with this because it looks pretty good to me. The next thing I am going to do is I am going to go ahead and crop because having this bright white clipping back here is going to affect my levels when I go to adjust them. Levels when I go to adjust them. So I'm selecting my crop tool and I know that I want it to be 630 pixels wide. It doesn't matter how tall it is. Uh, let's see, I think I want a horizontal rectangle. So uh, let's just try 400. Oops, that's 300. 400 pixels. What's going on here? 630 pixels, 400 pixels, and uh, I guess we only need 72 dpi. And I'm going to click and drag. I want to give uh, some nice breathing room at the top and bottom around my can. I'm not going to center mine perfectly. I keep calling it mine. This is actually the back of Jeff Toy's can. That looks pretty good to me. I like to, I like this little bit of a shadow here because it gives my photo some dimension. Um, let's see, I want to go a little bit tighter because I see this dark shadow over here. So that's something you want to watch for when you're shooting, making sure there's no obstruction in your lighting. So I'm going to crop that out, move this down just a little bit more, and hit enter. And zoom in again. Um, the shortcut for zoom in and zoom out is one I recommend you remember. Use command plus or command minus. So I'm doing command plus, command plus, command plus. And now I'm viewing it at 200%. I guess it's better to go ahead and view it at 100%, the size that I'll actually do. And you know what? I've actually made a mistake here. I would like to encourage you to save it at a higher resolution and then save it and then do the color editing, and then save it to a smaller size for your blog. And that way you don't have to do the editing again if you ever want to print this image out. So we're going to go back on the crop. I'm going to zoom out until I'm at 25%. And I'm going to change this. I want the same proportions, but I am not going to specify 
let's see, actually, let's not even use the crop tool yet. Let's use the rect rectangular marquee tool here. Fixed ratio, and we want 630, oops, 630 by 400. And then you can use your arrow key. And what this is doing is that just, that didn't scale the size of my photo down. We just eliminated the outside junk that we don't want to mess with, don't want to have mess with our color. Uh, so we'll, now it's the right proportions for our blog, but it's not the right size. So that's a better way to go about doing it. Let's see, I need to move my palettes over so you can see them. There we go. Okay. So the first thing I do is I adjust the levels. I should say the first thing I do to adjust color is I adjust the levels. I go down here and this little arrow represents your blacks. This represents your midtones and colors. Midtones. And this represents your whites. So this flat line means we don't have any true whites in the picture. Our first true whites really begin about right here. And our true blacks begin about right there. And I usually like to add a little extra black in. So, but before we do blacks or whites, we're going to adjust the midtones. So I'm going to select this button, this field right here, which corresponds with this. And I'm going to keep start arrowing up. Arrow, arrow, arrow up. Now I'm going to go and adjust my whites. And I, you can slide it. I like to usually use my arrows. Okay, so this is bad up here, where this is starting to glow up there. You don't want that, because that means we're blowing out the whites. So we're going to go back down on that a little bit. And we're going to maybe pull back here just a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to add some black. Not too much. Five is good. I think I do want to go... Maybe I'll push my whites down a little further to try and keep this glow out. We can I'll also show you something so that we can fix that. This is probably going through a lot of trouble for a blog image, but hey, once you get the hang of it, you go through it really fast. Okay. I'm going to run with this. And the next thing I want to do is I want to adjust my color balance. It's looking a little bit green to me. I know, I remember from class actually that this printed out a little bit greener than Jeff wanted it to. The yellows came out a little bit muddied. So we can actually correct that in Photoshop. I wouldn't recommend using that as a crutch all the time, but just to make subtle changes this is certainly acceptable. So I usually want to add a little bit of red. I usually want to take out a little bit of green. And I never, I almost never go above 10. From, I never go up 10 or down 10. Because that starts to get altering it too much. So another thing that I'm looking at is look at what's happening to my whites up here. My whites start to look a little bit purple, which means I think that I'm overdoing it. So I'm going to go back down on my magenta. And maybe down on my red a little bit. And let's see, we can click preview on and off. It's so subtle when I go off and on. But I think that I made the green just a little bit, the yellow just a little bit less green. Let's do this a little bit more. Okay. Then I go into brightness and contrast. I add a little bit more brightness. Yeah, that made a nice difference for us. And a little bit more contrast. Again, I don't really like to go above 10. But then you can see a preview on and off. So now I want to show you the difference between when we first started the color correction to make sure we didn't overdo it. So I have my history panel open. If your history panel is not open, you can go to the window menu and click history up there. I want to click up here and see what happened. See, look at the difference there from this to this with just a few little changes. Okay, so the next thing I recommend is going ahead and saving. Some people like to do uh, 
actually an, un an unsharp mask first to make it just a little bit crisper. It's a subtle change, but you can start to see a little bit more detail when you have a slight unsharp mask. Okay, so first I want to save this as and I always tell you to save in a good spot on your desktop or a good spot on your computer that makes sense with your file organization and I would do my the, the artist's last name followed by Tin Can Salesman, followed by, um, edit. Okay. And we're not quite done yet. The next thing I would do is go to image, image size, and we want to change this to 630 because that's our blog size. Okay. And this is showing it at 25%. So Apple Plus, Apple Plus, Apple Plus, Apple Plus shows us 100%. That's what it will look like on the blog. Uh, one more quick thing I can show you is if you want to get the Dodge tool. And we want to lighten up those midtones there. I'd pick a really, oops, I'm going to hover over the canvas and right click to change the di di diameter of my brush. You want to go pretty big because you don't want it to be noticeable and I always bring the hardness down. Hardness means um, like how, how defined is that circle going to look. Uh, the less hardness you have, the more blurred your edges of your, your tool are going to be. So I'm just going to hit that spot a couple of times, click, 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 click. And now let's look at the difference to make sure we didn't make too big of a difference. I'm going to click up here on my history path. See, I just eliminated that dark patch over there. Just a little trick. Okay. So uh, I'm going to save again. Now, normally you would have wanted to make that change before you shrink it down for your blog, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to keep moving on. Instead of save as this time, I'm going to save for web and devices. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to pick a nice balance between uh, an image that will appear clear and crisp with no pixelation, but also go to this, the smallest file size I possibly can. So I want to make sure I've selected JPEG here. And right now, this box is showing us 100% quality, 100 uh, this one is showing us 50% quality, and I'm starting to see some pixelation in there that I don't like. This one shows us 25, and there's a lot of noise in there. See that noise? So we don't want that. Uh, go ahead and save. And this time, I'm going to make sure I'm saving it in the same spot as my last one. There's my first one. So now I'm going to call it Edit Blog, so that I know that it's saved down for my blog and ready to go. Save. Close out. And uh, no, I don't need to save it because I already did save that. And that's how to do a simple quick edit on your portfolio image.